Hey, what's up, nerds? Ball Conti here with Radio Free Hammer Hall and the first edition of our new weekly Math Hammer series. That is right, folks. Every week you are going to be getting a shot of mathematics straight to your dome with a big old hammer. So here we go. We're going to dive first right into some new things in second edition Age of Sigmar. Specifically, we're looking at the new forward to victory command ability and our quote-unquote deep strike mechanics. Um, big variety of things that fall into the deep strike bucket. That's just how I'm going to refer to all of these abilities. I'm going to list out a, a lot of common ones a bit later on. But in general, I'm just talking about abilities that allow you to set up a unit during deployment off the board and bring it onto the board later or teleport a unit or otherwise make remove a unit from the board and set it up or set it up from off the board not originally in deployment everybody also has access to forward to victory so it is relevant for all armies um and combining these two things is crazy powerful and we're going to get into exactly why so first, let's just quickly read through Forward to Victory and some of the nuances here that are important to keep in mind. So here is the literal text straight from the rules. You can use this command ability after you make a charge roll for a friendly unit that is within 6 inches of a friendly hero or 12 inches of a friendly hero that is a general. If you do so, re-roll the charge roll. So you are activating this command ability Typically in the charge phase, although it's interesting that this does not specifically say it activates in the charge phase, it activates after you make a charge roll. So when you have abilities like, say, um, the ability that Korn has on the Blood Tithe table to make an, uh, a hero phase charge you'd be able to activate this then as well and re-roll that charge if you fail. Uh, so it's, this is attached to charge rolls, not a specific phase of the game. Also important to note, it is within 6 inches of a hero or 12 inches of your general, not wholly within. So you can have a lot of flexibility with this in general. And what very specifically makes this work so much better than previous command abilities that we've had that have allowed you to reroll charges. It's that you're using this when the charge roll is made and, and theoretically failed or just not as high as you would like it to be to get into the unit you want to get to. So what that allows you to do is you can use this ability on units that are not on the battlefield during your hero phase. Very important to have that interaction between those two different pieces of rules here. Also, just a quick nod to multiplayer. This says friendly hero and friendly general. Um, so if you're playing a team multiplayer game, you can activate this off of your allies' heroes as well. Quick math on rerolls. It's a pretty simple equation. Odds of success plus odds of failure times odds of success. So, very easy example is with a 5 plus roll on a d6. You have a 1 in 3 chance, 33% of success. You have a 67 point or 66.666% 66 chance of failure. So, it's the 33% chance of success plus the 67 percent chance of failure times the 33 percent chance of success so your odds of success of a five plus with a reroll are 55 percent compared to the 33 percent of the natural five plus here i've done all of this out in a table i'm going to set up something somewhere have not quite decided what yet, uh, where 
this will be available for download for people to reference so they don't have to like come back to this video or try and recreate it. Um, going to have this slide available as a reference for the community somewhere. Just haven't figured out where yet. It'll be down in the description below once I do. So, interesting to note, obviously, the longer the distance is, the lower your odds of success. I added this improvement column all the way over on the right. That is how much the reroll improves your odds of success. Uh, and you'll see there's an inverse correlation here to the distance. So your long bomb charges are much more likely to happen comparatively uh, with a reroll. You know, you have, oh, you're almost twice as likely to reroll a charge successfully um, on a 12 plus versus only getting a 3% improvement on a three inch charge, but you're already at basically guaranteed on a three inch charge. So just some interesting math here. Um, you notice there's kind of an interesting sweet spot right in the middle, the five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, well, actually, not five, but six, seven, eight, nine. That's really right in the middle, and that is where we get a lot of bang for our buck on the reroll and pretty good odds of success with the reroll. And that is the general area where our deep strike abilities live. So just for a quick reference here, these are some of the common deep strike abilities that I'm referring to. Um, so the Stormcast Battle Trait uh, and Lightning Chariot both uh, let you do a setup nine inches away from enemy models. Um, the Command Trait is setting them up off the board. Lightning Chariot is a prayer that is available to your priests. Uh, the Stormcast Vanguard Chamber that can set up in Pursuit. Uh, also, setting up in Pursuit with the Lord Aquilor's Command Ability. Um, which we're going to talk about a little bit further. Uh, Nurgle has Gut Rot Spume that can let you deploy your Blight Kings off the board. Uh, Seraphon can teleport. Uh, the Deep can have the Soul Scryer, which is a 9-inch setup as well. Um, he also gives those units 3 inches extra to charge, so it effectively becomes a 6-inch charge. Fire Slayers get the Rune Smiter. Legions and Nagash can set up in the Grave and have the Grave Sight option and set up at least 9 inches away. Summoning, generally speaking, is at least 9 inches away from your opponent, so... In general, it, the number is 9 inches, although you'll see this. we have that anomaly of the Stormcast that's set up in Pursuit, and Nurgle with Gut Rot Spume, the Blight Kings get plus 1 to charge, and the Deepkin Soul Scryer can get plus 3 to charge. The other interesting thing here, the ones that I've thrown asterisks next to, those are ones where you basically are either required to have a hero deploying with the models that are deep striking or with the Storm Stormcast Pursuit. It is optional with the Lord Aquilor. He can set up next to them. Um, so they kind of come with a natural ability to activate your uh, forward to victory if needed. These other abilities, while they're all also strong, you need to get a hero in a place where they'll be close enough to uh, your units that are deep striking to give them that reroll. Other interesting thing that's just sort of an asterisk here is the Chronomatic Cogs Endless Spell can give plus two to charges. It casts on a seven, which 
as we looked at on one of the previous slides, it's not the best odds for our casting. It's something I've talked about before that I really hate spells that go off on sevens. Um, but there's plenty of things out there that give you bonuses to cast, including just arcane terrain. So chronomatic cogs are probably going to be a subject of a video in the future. I'm not really going to go into them too deeply here. I'm mostly just looking at the deep strike plus stuff in the army plus forward to victory. So here's our zoom in on our odds of charges when we deep strike. Your natural abilities, your normal abilities are all nine inches away from your opponent. So that's 27.78%. So about a quarter of the time those charges are successful, which I think is part of the reason why we haven't really seen a lot of these abilities uh, really being like overwhelming in the metagame. I think they nicely positioned them in a spot mathematically where they were not giving you a good chance of success. Um, the uh, seven inches is, you know, setting up a pursuit with your storm cast. The six inches is your deep kin coming in with the soul scryer. And the eight inches is your uh, Nurgle units, your blight Kings coming in with gut rot spume. You'll see that, when we get the reroll, it really is substantially increasing the odds of this. Your basic 9-inch deep strike goes to 47.84%, which is basically a coin flip of whether or not it's going to land. Your Blight Kings coming in now go to about two-thirds of the time they're going in. Your Stormcast set up in Pursuit are over 80% of the time and your deep kin coming in are 93.75% of the time they are going to make that charge, which is absolutely outrageous. That is uh, almost a guarantee. Obviously it's a dice game. Stuff happens that six and a quarter percent is going to happen to you probably at exactly the time that you don't want it to happen. But, that ability is so unbelievably strong. Um, I hadn't really read the Deepkin book before, and I read that War Scroll, and I'm like, maybe I need a Deepkin art me now. I, I don't know. Um, so, just adding to this the Chronomantic Cogs, um, what happens when you have a reroll and the cogs on these abilities, it just like slides everything up too. So your nine inch, uh, deep strikes with a reroll with the cogs in play are an 82.64% chance of success. And that is the worst of these, you know, you've got a 99% chance of getting there with the deepkin, which is just crazy. But again, beware of the seven casting value, uh, whole other video on that. I already did a video before on, uh, spell casting in the 2d6 thing, uh, and why sevens suck. Um, but that again, that's a whole other conversation. Uh, this is just a thought that I wanted to throw out there because, I think the chronomantic cogs are going to be a thing that you're going to see frequently. And I think it's worth noting at least to throw a slide in here that says, this is what you've got to deal with. Um, you know, it, it, just as an example with Nurgle, the great unclean one can give himself plus one to cast. So he brings, the cog casting value down to six, 
which is much, much more likely to succeed than the seven. And it then brings those Blight Kings that you drop in right in front of your opponent up to a 93.75% chance of success on their charge. So they're getting there. Um, they might also be in a Blight Cyst and have Rend. And who knows what other things are happening. Uh, but that's super good. So some general takeaways. Um, the interesting thing here is that your command points are a resource, and you don't have to commit that resource beforehand for this command ability. So it really lets you have some flexibility, and you're only using a resource when you need the reroll. You're not paying the resource to have the insurance policy of the reroll. Command points are cheap, they're plentiful, you get at least five a game. Um, I think virtually everyone is going to either be running a battalion or buying at least one command point in their list. So, it, especially in lists that are going to be relying on things like this, um, you want to be able to activate a regular command ability and still have that reroll in your pocket if you need to. Um, your deep strike mechanics are dramatically increasing in power with these rerolls. The nine inch setups before made the alpha strikes very unlikely. You had like a 25% chance of getting an alpha strike with these various deep striking abilities. Um, there were some that were already kind of inherently better, like the one with the deepkin, the one that Nurgle has. Um, I think this is enough that this is going to become a really significant metagame issue that, you're going to have to think about this, and this is your opponent's going to be coming at you turn one from off the board somewhere. In many cases, I think. Um, so it's something you're going to need to plan for. Some of the big highlights that I really see here um, Lord Aquilar and Vanguard Palidors, he can sweep them off the board in the hero phase, put them back on at the end of the movement phase, they can still charge. They're set up seven inches away, so they have a very good chance of success. So I could see a Stormcast Alpha Strike list using the Aquilor in a unit of six Palidors and just dropping them on your doorstep and charging you. That seems like a, a really good thing to do. Uh, Gut Rot, Spume, and Putrid Blight Kings, those were already really good. They just got better. And you can pull the shenanigans with the Great Unclean One and your uh, Chronomantic Cogs. And, of course, uh, the All-Star here, the Soul Scryer, and I would say either Morsar Guard or Namarty Thralls. Uh, maybe something else. I haven't really looked at the Deepkin book enough yet, but that scroll site dryer is crazy good. Crazy, crazy good. Um, so that is all for now, folks. Um, I thank you all, and we will see you again soon.